Let's see what it means to see the Smith chart as a Y chart. Now before, even though we didn't talk about it as such, we saw the Smith chart as a Z chart. Because the chart equated the reflection coefficient gamma with the impedance Z. Now this impedance was normalized before being plotted resulting in the normalized impedance little r plus j little x where the real part is called the resistance and the imaginary part is called the reactance. Now let's see if we can do something very similar but use the admittance y instead of impedance z. So just like impedance, the admittance can be normalized resulting in the normalized admittance little g plus j little b where little g is the conductance or I should say the real, the real part of the admittance is called the conductance and the imaginary part is called the susceptance. Now we know that the admittance is equal to the inverse of the impedance which means that little y is equal to 1 over little z, little z and y naught is equal to 1 over z naught. So up to now we've defined gamma using impedances. We can also define gamma using admittances. And there is a a one-to-one -one mapping. Okay, little y is one over little z. And so there's a one-to-one -one mapping between gamma z and gamma y. And we're going to define gamma y as y minus y naught divided by y plus y naught which can be normalized to little y minus 1 over little y plus 1. We can find uh, the relationship between gamma y and gamma z by substituting 1 over little z into y. So let's see what what we find for that. 1 over z minus 1 divided by 1 over z plus 1 is equal to 1 minus z over 1 plus z. That is equal to minus z plus 1. Actually, um, minus z minus 1, or yep, minus 1 divided by little z plus 1. And that, and that turns out to be equal to the negative of gamma z. So let me talk about what that means in reference to the Smith chart. So the Smith chart is at the same time a y chart and a z chart. This means that every point on the Smith chart can be interpreted as either an impedance or an admittance. And what we will find is that the numbers are exactly the same whether you're on the z chart or a y chart. It is only the interpretation of those numbers that's different. So here we have a vector for gamma z. And we saw from the math that gamma y is equal to gamma z rotated by 180 degrees. We will use this fact a lot when moving between the z chart and the y chart. Now let's look at a couple of important points on the Smith chart and give them an interpretation on the z chart and the y chart. So the leftmost point corresponds to when z is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. And on the z chart, z equals to 0 means that it's a short, while on the y chart, y is equal to 0 means that it's an open. So the exact same point is interpreted as a short on the z chart and an open on the y chart. Now if I go 180 degrees away from this point, then both z and y are equal to infinity. 
and on the Z chart I interpret this point as an open okay because my impedance is infinite while on the Y chart I interpret that point as a short because my admittance is infinite so the numbers on, on the Smith chart whether it's a Y chart or a Z chart are identical but the physical meaning of these numbers is different so as we just saw the rightmost point on the Smith chart is the point infinity whether it's on the Z chart or the Y chart but infinity implies an open on the Z chart and implies a short on the Y chart okay so what happens as I rotate clockwise on the Smith chart away from the Z equals Z, uh, zero point well on the Z chart I become more inductive as my Z is increasing while at the same time on the Y chart if I'm on the Y chart and my Y is increasing that means I'm becoming more and more capacitive on the bottom half the, the opposite is true as Z becomes more negative I become more um, capacitive on the Z chart and as Y becomes more negative I become more inductive on the Y chart now this circle is a constant R circle on the Z chart and a constant um, G circle on the Y chart so it's either a R equals 1 or a G equals 1 circle this is a constant X circle on the Z chart and a constant B circle on the Y chart where X is equal to 1 or B is equal to 1 this one is x equals to minus 2 on the z chart and b is equal to minus 2 on the y chart so the values again are the same but the interpretation um, of x is equal to minus 2 or b is equal to minus 2 is going to be different and just to point out another one this is the r is equal to 2 or g is equal to 2 circle so we saw that gamma y is equal to the negative of gamma z and as I mentioned before this implies that the magnitude of gamma y is equal to the magnitude of gamma z while the phase of gamma y is equal to the phase of gamma z uh, plus 180 degrees later on we're going to use this to translate between an impedance on the Z chart to an admittance on the Y chart so last I'd like to mention that uh, big Y the unnormalized admittance Y typically leads to very small numbers while the normalized version little y uh, usually leads to reasonable numbers that easily um, map onto a Y chart so for example let's say that big Z is equal to 100 ohms from that we can calculate big Y to be equal to 0 0.01 Siemens okay now this um, this you know both these numbers mean that little z is equal to 2 while little y is equal to 1 half which easily maps onto the y chart also note that both z and y or little z and little y don't have any units associated with them so this concludes my introduction to seeing the smith chart as a z chart and a y chart